This is Echo 3, and let's discuss a crewed Duna mission in career mode. Mission Control is only offering one Duna contract that I'd like to take, so we will only be completing that one. Mostly, we will be focused on getting as much science as possible. In order to do everything that I would like, we will need to upgrade the Research and Development Building and the Launch Pad to Level 3. Then we can unlock more technologies and launch even bigger rockets. In the R&D building, we can unlock the biggest rocket parts, even more engines and better engines like the Vector, bigger landing legs, and the Graviola Detector. That will give us all the parts we need for our mission rocket. But we can unlock a few other things as well. We've got the science points to spend. Perhaps in a future mission we will take advantage of some of these added parts. I just don't have any plans for them currently. Now, in the Vehicle Assembly Building, we can prepare our craft. Let's discuss what we need for this mission. Beyond the basics of a capsule, parachute, and heat shields, we'll need to consider every phase of the mission. We will build our craft working backwards. If we aero break into landing, we only need a heat shield and a parachute. We can shave off a blader to save weight since the heat shields are way overpowered in the stock game. To get from Kurt, sorry, to get to Kerpen from low Duna orbit, we need a minimum of 750 meters per second of delta V and another 1500 meters per second to launch from the surface of Duna to get into low orbit. These numbers will be fine as long as you are a good pilot, use a proper Duna to Kerbin transfer window, and if your craft is reasonably aerodynamic. I intend to eject from low Kerbin orbit directly to Duna. This means I can forgo the formality of getting into Duna orbit. So, to get from low Kerbin orbit to Duna, that'll take about 1,100 meters per second of delta V. So at a minimum, the upper stage of our craft needs 3,350 meters per second of delta V. Our upper stage has over 4,400 meters per second of delta V. This means that our upper stage is more than capable if it starts fully fueled in low orbit. It was my intention to use some of the fuel to finish the circularization burn and have extras for any correction burns that we may need to make. I'm adding some ladders here. Duna atmosphere is thin enough that the uh, Kerbal's RCS packs work. They don't work great, but they work. I like to have ladders just to be on the safe side for getting up into my craft. And we were going to probably want to put a fairing on this just to make sure our parts don't get damaged on ascent. Now this is a really big fairing and will not be the most aerodynamic as we ascend but it'll be good enough to protect our parts and we'll just kind of plow our way through. The first stage of the rocket consists of a large liquid-fueled core powered by two vector engines. And I am piecing that together here. Since the only two vector engines won't provide quite enough thrust uh, on a, the initial ascent, I'm going to add a couple boosters on the side. We are almost at enough thrust. I mean, with 1.1, that's enough to get us off the ground. I usually like to aim for around 1.3 uh, thrust to weight ratio on launch. Uh, you might have a preference either way, but I found that's the best for getting a good gravity turn. And you can uh, check out my video on what a good gravity turn actually looks like. And this will give us way more delta V than we need when we put all these parts on. We can actually get this center booster core all the way into orbit just on its own. Now, we are already at the transfer window for Duna. So once in orbit around Kerbin, we can plot the ejection burn maneuver. That will take us directly to Duna's sphere of influence. It is important to use transfer windows. You can actually check out my transfer window video and see the importance of doing that for going to Duna. Now our rocket is way overbuilt. A good player can land on Duna and return to the surface of Kerbin for 6,750 meters per second of delta V. We have about a thousand more than that. So we can see how much delta V I have left at the end of the video. And if it's about a thousand, then I flew the mission well but I also then way over-engineered the craft. I have sped up the mission footage by eight times. Um, I tried... Uh, <laughs> you guys are probably not going to watch every little thing, so you'll probably appreciate that. To watch in real time would have taken about an hour, 
and would have really tested your patience. Since this is my current career mode save, I'm frequently having a Kerbal go EVA to gather science. I will not detail all of that. The gravioli detector is a new experiment for the mission, so I run it often. It is biome specific. That means uh, any biome you're over, that includes low and high space, as well as any biome you are on on the surface. So it is able to be in a lot of different instances to get science. As we pilot the craft, we need to keep in mind how we budgeted our Delta V. In addition to the basic requirements, we do have about a thousand meters per second of absolute Delta V to perform correction burns. While this is substantial, we cannot make lots of extra burns. It is best to be as exact as possible. And an important thing to note is that we need to burn our engine a little bit to help slow down for landing on Duna. We do have a lot of parachutes, but it will not be quite enough, so we should plan on using about 50 meters per second or so to make sure we touch down softly. Uh, I use the mod trajectories to help with the aero braking. A general guide though would be to set a periapse between 15 and 20 kilometers around Duna if you are intending to land uh, coming from Kerbin. Aero braking turns kinetic energy into heat energy. Fortunately, the atmosphere on Duna is thin enough and our velocity low enough that the heating will not be an issue for our craft. And I'm gonna gather all the science here in every instance that I can because this is a career, save that I, a career save that I'm actually playing. And I really like aero braking on the Duna. It's a great way to save Delta V. Um, we could aero brake a little higher into the atmosphere around 25 kilometers or so and that would actually be enough uh, to get us into a, a lower orbit. So if I was wanting to get into orbit and then plot my landing, I could do that. Um, you just set your aero braking maneuver a little higher. Um, but in this case, I went a little lower because I want to go right into landing. And here I'm using my engine, slow down a little bit. I knew I had the extra Delta V and I wanted to land on um, in the valley here. The nice thing about landing in the valley on Duna is that I have a little extra atmosphere for the parachutes to help slow the craft down. Although it's gonna make uh, takeoff cost just a little bit more Delta V than starting higher up on the planet. But uh, honestly, we've got a <laughs> way over engineered craft. We're gonna be all right. Now it's, it's dark, so we might wanna wait for some sunlight so we can see what we're doing but we'll gather all the science here. On the surface of Duna, uh, you know, we can gather the science, and uh, of course, you know, we're gonna have to plant a flag here, because that's what you do when you go anywhere in Kerbal Space Program, you plant the flag, although this actually will give our pilots and uh, engineer and uh, scientist a little bit of extra ex experience points. Um, really, that's, that's all we've got to do here on the surface. Uh, I didn't bring a rover or a plane or anything with me, so we're pretty much done. So we're going to set up a transfer um, to go back to Duna. I'm using Kerbal Alarm Clock to set that up. It's a handy, a handy tool. It's a mod though. There are plenty of online tools. If you look it up, a transfer window from Duna back to Kerbin is when Kerbin is 75 degrees behind Duna. Uh, you can check out my ELU Endeavor video, and I use Alex Moon's transfer calculator there. It's a wonderful tool online. Um, there are others, so you know you don't have to have access to mods to get all the good information for the game. Most of the time, it is necessary to make correction burns on the way to your destination. The ejection burn will be able to get me close, but I'll need to plan uh, a mid-course correction here to line up because the idea is that I'm going to go directly into Kerbin's atmosphere. I don't plan on circularizing around Kerbin or anything. Um, I'm just going to aero brake and land uh, without any without burning anymore. But I'll need to make a small mid-course correction, and usually these uh, don't cost very much. In this case, I'm actually a little bit below Kerbin, so I'm gonna set up a mid-course correction so I can come along equatorial. Uh, I don't know, it's just my preference. And I'm gonna do that at the descending node. And these burns, they don't really cost very much and you have to um, often turn the engine power way down so you don't overburn. It's, it's very easy to do that. 
And I set that up, and then all we gotta do is come in for our landing. Looks like I get a small encounter with the MUN. I might as well get a little extra science as I fly by it. I have updated some of my visual mods. I think I'm using uh, Spectra or something now. Uh, I'm not quite sure what all I have installed. I'm not using Astronomer's Visual Pack. I'm trying out some different ones. Uh, you can see the mod trajectories again as I plan my aero brake to landing maneuver. I didn't feel like doing a lot of passes and just coming in and landing immediately. Although Duna has a, a thin atmosphere, Kerbin's atmosphere is fairly thick and we will need the heat shield to survive this. The capsule itself probably wouldn't have made it. But I stripped down the, the blader so we are going to end up we are going to end up using all of that as we aero brake here but it's uh, very heat tolerant and we'll be fine i do like the effects though that some of these visual mods have added and we are about done with this mission uh as another note i have finished um i have finished harvest and i probably will have a little extra time to make videos that'll be good uh, we just finished last week so got everything put away and that's a good feeling. And we are coming down, gather the science as we come down. And there we go. Uh, upon landing, we can recover our pod and behold the 3,200 science points we have earned. This may not be the most financially savvy mission, but it was an enjoyable one. Hey, thanks for joining me to discuss the Delta V requirements of a Duna mission.